Hi guys, welcome back. We're some days here. I'm Kim. I'm Daryl. And this is Bentley. And today we decided that we would go ahead and kind of do a recap of this year and let you know the places that we stayed and where we went for free and what it actually cost us to stay in a park this year. And a lot of our time that we did do on the road was actually staying at BLM lands, free campsites. Um, we didn't pay for that much. So we wanted to kind of go over this with you and just let you know that you, if you're not, if you don't have a really big budget, you still can do this. There's things out there. You don't have to go and spend $50, $60 a night at a campground. So we just wanted to go over a few of these. They're in no order. They're, it doesn't mean that they, these were our favorites. This is just what we did. The first one that we did was Pomosa South. Isn't it Pomosa South? It's just Pomosa Road, BLM. You can stay there for 14 days, which is in Arizona Quartzsite area. Um, yeah, it's right north of Quartzsite. Uh, that's where I think they had the uh, RTR uh, little meetup where everybody parked last they did. year. You're right. Uh, and uh, our good buddy um, Papa Drew had his meetup out there. And there's a bunch of other people that go out there and have meetups. But it's a nice, it's north of uh, uh, Quartzsite, probably, I don't know, maybe eight miles, something like that. And we're looking forward to going back to Papa Drew's meetup again this year. Um, it was a lot of fun. We went to Lake Meredith, Texas, which was 30 miles northeast of Amarillo. And it was very nice. They had some some places that you could actually pay to park that was $25 a night, or they had some that was right on the water that didn't have any kind of hookups, which was fine. We didn't need them. And you could stay there for free. And Sharon and Bobby with the Pneumatic Ramblers, they're the ones that had told us about it. And we went and met them out there. And it was a great find and a great time. Yeah, and also they got picnic tables. There's shelters out there. There's a fire ring. Yeah. I mean, it's really a really nice spot. It is. It's up by uh, the the Sanford uh, Boger area, you know, north of uh, uh, Abilene or Amarillo. Then we went. We actually went here twice. We went to Bryce Canyon. This year was just kind of like all over the place with everything that was going on. So we went to Bryce Canyon. The first time we went, we went with um, Shirley and Daryl's brother, Deb, and... Um, Daryl's brother? I Darryl, got a, bro I got a brother I don't know. Daryl's sister, oh. Deb, and Laurel that we had met. So that was on Tom Best Spring Road in the Dixie National Forest on Road 117. Yeah, that's the, the fire road. And they have 16 days that you can stay there. It's not 14. It's 16 days you can stay there. It's huge. There's plenty of private places you can go. And it is absolutely beautiful, relaxing, and just a great time. You're probably 10 min 15 minutes 15 from minutes Bryce, from Bryce. And, it's, and there's another town of Panwich that's close by. You can yeah. get groceries at. Um, at Joe's. Nice big trees uh, in the park. Uh, you, can, there, you can take a 45 uh, class A in there, 45 foot class A in there if Anything you want to. Can fit. Some areas are small that you know it's going to be hard to get into, but most of the areas up there you have no problem getting in. The road is well maintained, so don't worry about if it rains or not. It's not going to make a difference. So. And I feel that everybody can find a place out there. It's huge. I yep. mean, I don't think you would have any problem. That's correct. You know, trying to worry. Because some places, you know, you, they, you go and they say, I have six, seven spots here. And, you know, you have to wonder if you're going to need to get there at a certain time to get that spot. But here, there's no worries. I don't feel like anyway. No. We've done a lot of uh, National Forest land this year. And a lot of the National Forest roads that go in there. We did some over by uh, Grand Canyon and stuff. So, there's plenty of areas to find. Okay, the next one we have on here is Zion, and we actually stayed at Twin Hollows Canyon. It's 14-day limit, and it was Mount Carmel, which was, it was probably 30 minutes into Zion, correct? Yeah, it's the junction to go to uh, Zion from the east side is right there at Mount Carmel, and this is, what, maybe a mile, two miles uh, south of Mount Carmel, right off, right off the Highway 89. So, it's, it's a nice little place. It's People take their horses there to go. They go side by sides a lot. In some places it can get kind of crowded, but if you don't hit the uh, the peak time, uh, there's some nice areas that you can find. There's a nice little creek right behind it. But it is a lot smaller 
than like some of these other places. So I mean, in order to get there, it's a big ATV place. So I mean, you you really need to get there in the morning and you need to get there by like a Wednesday because on the weekends, I feel like it's gonna be pretty full. Yeah, and you need to be careful how you park out there too because other people will come in there in the middle of the night uh, and park right next to you. So when you go there, make sure you park where you're you're blocking your area off where you can get back into your fifth wheel if you need to hook up in the morning or something like that because some of them don't care and they'll just come right up on you at 1 30 in the morning and take out all their atvs and start them up and block you in it, it was horrible but it, it but after that it was all okay we only stayed there like two days just yeah, we so stayed. we could go to yeah. zion yep yeah. And that, that was while we were there that just happened one night so that's really our worst experience i think we've ever had yep yeah. Um, then we went to Flagstaff and we went to the Cinders. And the Cinders is the OHV uh, area north of Flagstaff where you can go out and ride your side by sides. There's plenty of camping out there. Uh, there are areas you can get away from everybody and not deal with the dust and the noise. But, uh, you know, it's some places it's loose of the Cinders from the, from the volcano that erupted way back when. Um, but it's a nice area, level areas. You can get a lot, lots of solar, but there's just, to me, there wasn't a lot to do. And every time you went outside, you came back in, you had all these little black rocks everywhere inside and everything from the cinders, you know, but. Yeah. Stuck on your shoe and stuff. I mean, it's just north, free. <laughs> it's north of Flagstaff, 10 minutes. Um, it's off, again, off of uh, Highway 89. Uh, but there's Sunset Crater nearby you can go see. You got the Indian Reservation out there. That, you can, that was you, nice. You can go see. So it, it's a nice little area to get off and camp. But again, on the weekends, it gets pretty crowded. So don't expect to go out there and have a nice, quiet evening uh, all the time. Some nights you do, but you never know who's going to show up. And if you're allergic to dust, don't go. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, all right, the next one is in, we went to Mitri Lake, which was another find of the Nomadic Ramblers. And we went out there and we met up with them and Shirley from following the Yellow Brick Road. And that was in Yuma, it was a 10 day stay and it was a nice area. It was a wildlife area and it was really pretty. Yeah, I think it's on the south side of the, uh, of the lake in, in between Yuma uh, and the lake. It's right on the lake. They got a boat ramp there. A lot of people go out and fish out there. Nice campground. I think they, they. I don't know how long it's been there, but when we were there, I mean, it was all nice limestone, gravel deal, and they separate each individual uh, camping area with boulders, so you don't have anybody coming right up on you. Um, it was nice. It, it was very nice, very quiet, um, a fantastic spot, and it's uh, again. You can jump into Yuma quick and go get your propane or whatever right. you need. Uh, we thought it was a fantastic place. Yep. Then we ended up going to Lake Havasu in Arizona and we went out to Craigie Wash and that was 14 days and we almost got washed out there that time. Yeah, check <laughs> out our video stormed. that we, we posted uh, last, uh, I guess it was be spring. September. Was it September? Or was it, no, it was in the spring. Oh, that's right, it was, you're right. It was on the way up. That's so right. we have a good video of it. It rained hard in the mountains and the wash actually filled up uh, full of water. That's one of the few times we've ever seen any of the washes actually run with water since we've been in the desert. But it's craggy wash. A lot of people go out there and, and, and enjoy the area. Just be careful where you park. Don't park in the wash. Make sure when you park you're up high enough that if it does rain uh, you're okay because it comes down there pretty fast and turns into a pretty torrent. Uh, waterway and if it, if you're concerned about it and you, you know there's rain coming you just need to go ahead and get out of there if you're in a bad spot agree but, but there's a lot of areas to camp out there but again there's a lot of stuff to do out there it's a popular area because it's close to Lake Havasu uh, so again you're gonna have to pick and choose people come and leave it's a popular place so Walmart's only about 10 minutes from you at the most yep. and then you know like we said you could go down and go to, to um, Lake Havasu and walk around. It's absolutely, I really enjoyed Lake Havasu. Well, I guess after we'd been out in the desert the whole time and then we went there, we was actually back in like a town, as I called it. So we could go shopping, we could go do whatever we wanted to do and it wasn't miles and miles away. Yep. But it was really, I, I had a good time there. 
Um, the next one is we went to Jackson, Miami, so we could go to the Tetons, and we stayed. We were looking at trying to look it up right now. We've always called it the Lower Teton View because you have the Upper Teton View that's always packed. So we always stay at the Lower Teton View. Um, it doesn't really say on on, on freecampsites.net. It doesn't actually call it Lower Teton View, but it's right underneath. Right, as you, as, you, as you come up the road um, from Jackson, I don't know, it's probably... Brigger Teton, what's it called? Bridger, Bridger. Teton mm -hmm. uh, National. It's right across from that little, um, what was that place we went to? Oh, that little house or whatever that's back in there. Somebody I can't remember the name of it. starts with a C, his name, John Conaway, Con John, um, whatever. But anyway, it's, uh, it's a nice road to get up there. If it does rain it could get a little slippery it's a little bumpy a little washboard out so just take your time you'll get up there you just got to remember on this one um, you got to be careful um, where you park up there also because water will come running down there and it's getting again popular very so people are thinking it's just a parking lot off the road and people will come in and park right next to you right next to your door or right next to your slide they come in late at night or block you in and tell you that well, I'm leaving tomorrow yeah or park in front of your rig I mean it was horrible then we could actually touch a camper that pulled in right next to us if we could if we wouldn't have the window here we actually could have touched the camper that's how close they were to us and then as soon as that happened another guy came and parked right I mean right in front of us in like a, a van yeah so and it's that's just the way camping's yeah. getting. We're going to do another video on that one day. But again, when you camp at these boondocking areas, make sure you have a way that you can get to your vehicle, or your vehicle can get out. Can get it out if you, you need know? to, because anything can happen at these night. Places you never are, know. These places are getting so popular that people are tired. They went to Yellowstone that day, or they went to the Tetons that day, and they're coming in late, or they're, or they're just coming in from another area. And they get up that road and they're going to say, well, I'm just going to park here and then I'm leaving in the morning, which one of them didn't. They just stayed there. But long story short, make sure, again, when you position your rig, you're, you're keeping enough area that if you want a little bit of space, if you want somebody to park next to you, that'll happen. There are some that are off the road that you can kind of get to, but it's hard to get level. But, but we've never had... I'm sorry. But this is, this is an area where you can go... And, and camp and feel pretty well safe. There are camp hosts and there are uh, volunteers for the uh, uh, the parks that stay there also. So you just gonna have to pick and choose of uh, where you stay in, but be prepared. Like like I've said before, a lot of these places are getting real popular. Right. I mean, we've we've stayed there uh, numerous times before and never had this problem. And even the camp host, she was like, this year they're 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 um population going to the national parks and people that are staying was like tripled yeah That's it's what she told everybody me. get at rvs that couldn't fly right. so everybody was couldn't work or whatever so everybody was hitting the road so. so there's nowhere for them to stay and they don't have any they don't a lot of these people don't know the etiquettes of boondocking and everything else no they're clue. new to it i mean i don't, but I we'll don't do blame a, them we'll, we'll do another video right. on that okay so then we went to yellowstone national park again and this was another find of the nomadic <laughs> ramblers we went and stayed with them and we had daryl and our daryl's cousin vicky and um her husband bernie with us and we stayed at island park idaho it's 16 miles from the entrance of yellowstone beautiful quiet loved it it's on the it's on the west side west yellowstone side of of the park and it's probably i don't know maybe 20 minutes uh west of uh west yellowstone 16 miles so it's a it's a nice little area there's a nice little gas station up the road from us it. it's got some supplies but if you need to go into uh, west yellowstone to get some of your bigger stuff you can do that also but uh, plenty of room to park out there you you get big rigs in there also uh, the area we were at was a big nice open field oh, yeah with a forest uh behind us so it it, it was fantastic you just got to be careful kind of going in the way we, when, you, when you go down that first thing, how it's kind of drops and yeah. stuff. You got to... It's a blacktop highway in there, and then you take your offshoots once you get in there. So some of the areas, you know, have been maybe washed out a little bit. So just do your due diligence. And, it's doable, trust and, me. And take your time and uh, enjoy. 
Yeah. And then the last but not least here, we went to Yuma again, <laughs> to the BLM at Pilot Knob so that we could go to Mexico for dental work, glasses, and just to have a good time and go eat some Mexican and drink some margaritas. And we loved it. Yeah, it's a little BLM land out there, uh, kind of in the middle of nowhere, uh, not too far off the interstate, but uh, it's a nice open area. Um, I think you can stay there for two weeks also, can't you? 14 days. Yeah. So it's a nice open area, plenty of places to park, take any rig you want in there. It's wide open desert, so you don't have any issues with any trees or, or cactus or anything. It's pretty well, nothing out there. There is a, a dumpster out there. Mm -hmm. And most of these places that we just talked about, there's no water, there's no sewer. Uh, there may be a dump station on the way in right. or close by or something, but these are all boondocking and primitive air so make sure you take everything you need when you go there and make sure you take everything out that you brought in pack it in pack it out but when you go up by utah and stuff like that like where we were all of your map not all of them i shouldn't say that a lot of your maverick stations have free dump and water so potable water so that's good to know so in case you're ever in that area and you need something you know you instead of paying 10 15 dollars you can actually do it for free yep but we hope you enjoyed our top 10 list of free boondocking uh, places to go. Uh, there's a lot more out there that we didn't even talk about. No, it just goes to show you can spend as much as you want or as little as you want, but you can still get out there and do your thing. That's right. So stop the madness. Start the adventure, guys. See you down the road. Bye.